Solve polynomial inequalities graphically. Solve 2 times x plus 5 times x square minus 4 greater than 0. Well, I am a great fan of solving polynomials graphically. Somehow, this part is kind of missing from most of the books. Now, once you see the tricks involved and the way we solve it, you will stop using algebraic methods. And I recommend you to use this graphical method for most of the polynomial inequalities, especially when it comes to multiple choice questions. Now, here is how we do it. And I have three examples lined up for you, which will give you different degree of polynomials and kind of interesting concepts. Now, this one, the thing typical about here is that x squared minus 4 can be further factored. So, you are given an equation which is not fully factored. In that case, it is important to factor your equation and then proceed. So, we can write this equation as equal to 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. This is difference of squares as you can recognize, right? So, this equation should be greater than 0. So, let me use the side implies. So, this implies that 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 is greater than 0. So, that is the polynomial equation which we need to solve. And now, the first step here is to find all the zeros, right? So, how do you get the zeros? So, to find zeros, what do you do is you equate each factor to 0. So, first factor is x plus 5, we equate it to 0 and we get x equals to minus 5. The second factor is x plus 2, equate to 0, you get x equals to minus 2. The third one gives you a 0 at x equals to plus 2, right? So, we have got three zeros for the given polynomial function. One is at minus 5, the other one minus 2, and the third one is at 1, right? So, what we will do now is sketch a number line. So, when you sketch a number line, then you can mark the zeros on your number line. So, this is how we'll sketch a number line. So, you know, number lines extend to both the sides. And the zeros are at minus 5. And note one thing, inequality is only greater than. It does not include the zero. So, when you plot zeros on your number line, put holes there. So, we have put one hole here for minus 5. And we can write here minus 5. The second one, minus 2. And the third one for plus 2. Okay. So, these are our zeros. Now, as you can see, the zeros divide your plane or the line or the intervals in three different intervals, right? Rather, four. Three zeros are here, so four intervals. So, let me draw a vertical line showing the four different intervals. Okay, this is running out of ink, so we'll use the other ink, right? So, we have these intervals. So, I'm drawing these lines separating the intervals. So, at this stage, what we will do is, we'll list the intervals in which zeros divide. So, we'll write down the intervals now. So, intervals for us are from minus infinity. So, let me use another ink to <coughs> show all this. Minus infinity to minus 5, correct? So, that is one interval. The second one is from minus 5 to minus 2. And then we have from minus 2 to 2. And the last one is from 2 to infinity. So, these are the four intervals for us. Now, in these intervals, you need to take a test point. So, let's take intervals and then let's have a test point in each interval. So, the test points in these intervals could be, let us say, minus 6 here. And between minus 5 and minus 2, we can take minus 3. Between minus 2 and 2, 0 is a good point. And between 2 to infinity, let's take 3. So, we have set of these test points, which will test our function, right? So, we just have these test points for the time being. And what we'll do at this stage is, we'll go for graphical solution. So, when we are going for graphical solution, the equation given to us is 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 5, x minus 2 greater than 0. Now, you see, this is basically a polynomial of degree 3. Now, if you have a degree 3 polynomial, 
with leading coefficient, in this case positive, how the graph should be. The end behavior is that it has to go up, right side up, right? Since it is odd degree, opposite ends. So basically it is kind of like this. So you can sketch your polynomial through these zeros. All the zeros are linear. That means you have to cross the line, right? So you cross the line and then you sketch it. So you can sketch the polynomial like this. Do you see that? So that polynomial, graph of this polynomial is shown here. So the function could be represented with this graph. Now you need greater than zero. That means what? Greater than zero means regions where it is positive, right? So this is positive here and positive here. So these are the two. So that forms the solution. That is our solution set, correct? So our answer is, we can write down answer straight away. And the answer is, this function is greater than zero in the interval from minus five to minus two and beyond two, that is union two to infinity. So that is our answer. Now, if you want, you can always plug in these points and test. That's why I gave you the test point. So what I was telling you about intervals and test point is to tell you that the zeros actually divide the domain into intervals. Three zeros will divide it into four intervals and your function at a zero moves from positive to negative since these zeros are linear. Correct? So in any case, you can expect sign of a polynomial to change near the zero. So you have to look for that change. Either, either it is positive or negative. Correct? So once you find that out, you know during which interval your polynomial is greater than zero. Mark those and write them in answer. Right? So it's as simple as that. So let's recap. How to do these kinds of questions graphically. Steps involved are when you are given equation in factored form write down your zeros. That is the first step. Second step is plot the function on the number line, right? So that is, I should say, step number two is plot or graph function, graph, graph your function, right? Graph function. So once you graph your function, you can see the result. And from there, from the graph, it is obvious. You want greater than zero, so all the points above zero, not including the zeros, is part of your solution set. Do you see that? Plot the function and write answer. That is so simple. Write your answer, right? Only thing is, you should check with your test points. At times, I've seen students may miss. Suppose there's minus here and you are drawn the other way, you may get wrong answers. And so it's kind of important to use at least one or two test points, right? Zero is not part of solution, right? So you should plug in zero and check. If you plug in zero, what do you get? You get positive and negative. You get a negative number. Negative number is not greater than zero. And so it should, it should not be part of your solution. That is correct. So that check is finally most important. So let me write down here, check your answer. So check solution. Using any test point, one or two, one which is not in your part of solution, the other one which is a part of your solution. It's a good idea, right? Just check it. And then it should be perfectly fine with you, okay? Now let's go through some more examples. Thank you and all the best.